fourth day of the Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Indonesia, Virtual Summer Course 2022, Advanced in Pharmaceutical Science. First, I would like to greet our honorable guest, Vice Dean for Academic Research and Student Affairs, Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Indonesia, Dr. Apotekar Fadina Chani Saputri, Magister Science. The honorable speaker for this lecture, Dr. Seiya Mizuno from Lab Animal Resource Center, University of Tsukuba, Japan. The honorable moderator, Apotekar Nuriza Ulul Asmi, Master of Science from the Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Indonesia. The honorable professors, lecturer, and all faculty members who attend today's lecture. And last but not least, I would like to greet all audiences and participants. This summer course is aimed for students and fresh graduates who are interested in increasing their knowledge of pharmaceutical science with a broader perspective, because we invite professors and lecturers from Universitas Indonesia, as well as from well-known universities abroad. And today, we'll be having the fifth lecture from Dr. Seiya Mizuno, which the title of lecture is Learn the Basics of Genetically Modified Mice for Conducting Effective In Vivo, in vivo Research. Before we start, let me explain the agenda for today's course. The first is opening. The second one is lecture session for about an hour, which followed by one hour discussion time. Then we have, uh, we'll be giving the certificate of appreciation for both speaker and moderator. And then we'll have group photo session. And then we will have a break for one hour before we continue to the lecture six in the afternoon. Now we'll move to our main agenda. Lecture five, which will be presented by Dr. Seiya Mizuno and will be moderated by Apotekar Nuriza Ulul Asmi, Master of Science. But before we begin this lecture, please allow me to read Apotekar Nuriza Ulul Asmi, Master of Science CV as today's moderator. Apotekar Nuriza Ulul Asmi, Master of Science, obtained her Bachelor of Pharmacy and Professional Pharmacist degrees from the Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Indonesia in 2013 and 2014, respectively. In 2014, she continued her studies in Japan and obtained a master's degree in medical sciences from the Graduate School of Medicine, Dentistry, and Pharmaceutical Science at Okayama University, Japan. She has continued to work as a lecturer and researcher at Universitas Indonesia's Faculty of Pharmacy since 2017. Currently, she is continuing her study towards a doctoral degree by taking a PhD program in humanics at the University of Tsukuba, Japan. She also serves on the editorial board of the Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research, or PSR, journal. All right, without uh, further ado, please welcome our honorable moderator, Apotekar Nuriza Ulul Asmi, Master of Science. To Mrs. Nuriza, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Arif Kurniawan, SDMC, for the introduction. Yeah, hello, everyone. Good morning and good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today in this event. My name is Nuriza Ulul Asmi, and I will be your moderator for today's lecture. As we know, drug discovery and development process includes several studies, such as preclinical, clinical study, and others. And in vivo study is one of them that supports the drug discovery and development process. So for this session, the lecture topic will be learn the basic of genetically modified mice for conducting effective in vivo research. This session will be two hours lecture with two main agendas. First, we are going to hear a presentation from our speaker, Dr. Seiya Mizuno and then it will be continued by Q&A or discussion session. So for the participants, please feel free to ask questions by using raise hand feature in the discussion session, or you also can type your questions through the chat box. All right, before we begin the webinar, please allow me to read Dr. Seiya Mizuno CV. So Dr. Seiya Mizuno currently work as an assistant professor in Laboratory Animal Science, Laboratory Animal Resource Center, Transborder Medical Research Center, Faculty of Medicine, University of Tsukuba, Japan. In 2007 to 2009, he went to a master's program in medical science at the University of Tsukuba. And in 2012, he obtained his doctoral, doctoral degree in biomedical sciences at the University of Tsukuba, Japan. 
He received the Japanese Association of Laboratory Animal Science Young Investigator Award in 2015, as well as the Chinese Association of Laboratory Animal Science International Award for Young Scientists in 2014. Such a very uh, great award. So, all right, without further ado, please welcome our honorable lecturer, Dr. Seiya Mizuno. Hello, Mizuno Sensei. Ah, yes, so we are so glad you could be here today to share your insights on this lecture. So, Sensei, are you ready to present your uh, research area, a research okay. topic? Yeah. Okay, thank you. The time and screen are yours. Thank you very much for the very, very kind introduction. So now I will start to share my screen. Oh, I cannot, sorry. Okay, I got it. Can you see my slide? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So I'm very happy to do this presentation today and more than 60 or 50 students are joined. And actually my presentation is not so much related to that pharm pharmacology and uh, it's a very basic uh, knowledge about the genetically modified mice and it may not uh, immediately useful for your research, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, maybe after you get some PhD or you start from the, your research, your own research, and if you want to start some in vivo model, I'm very happy if in that time uh, this information, my slide, my presentation, is help to your own research. Okay, now I will start, and uh, my name is Seiya Mizuno. And uh, firstly, I'd like to start my presentation from this very great uh, pictures. Actually, this is a 2014 February. I went to your uh, department and uh, you kindly prepared this very nice uh, slide for me. And this is me, it looks young now. And uh, many of the faculty with your department uh, very, very kindly uh, invite me and uh, uh, care, take care of me, take me care, like uh, food or some hotels or a very great campus, like the scene. So, and uh, some of souvenir, and uh, I'm, I also have it now. And uh, today also I'm very happy to join this course. And hopefully I want to go back in your department or campus to do some the, like this course. So first I'd like to introduce my self introduction to so my university. So this is a maps of the University of Tsukuba. And here the north side is in the medical area department. Medical department is in the most north side of our uh, university. And uh, sorry, the Tsukuba city is in here. And it's not so far from the Tokyo, just only around one hour by the train. And uh, if you come to Tsukuba, University of Tsukuba, so you can go to Tokyo for the sightseeing and the every week or something. And uh, in this campus, that uh, this is a medical area and we have the hospital here. And near to the hospital, my center is in and uh, there are two buildings, that building A and building B, and we manage these uh, species that mouse, lot, a rabbit, a dog, a pig, or something. And so this is a, a floor map of this uh, our center. That one is old one is a laboratory animal research wing, and I'm living here in the second floor in the human. And from third to fifth floor, that there are many mice. Majorly the mice and some rat and rabbit and dog is in here. I'm now, I'm here and dog is here and the monkey is in here. And pig also, yeah. And 
mutant mouse research, we call the building A. This is the building only for the mouse. Actually, that is second floor, there are many researchers and students do the experiment, but the third floor or fourth floor, just only, in, just only for the mice. And we are managing that some animal experiment in our university. And this animal center have two missions. One is to manage some that university animal experiment. And the other one is to making gene modified mice. And we have that gene modified mouse production service. And in our center making that around 100 to 200 gene modified mice per year. And we are making, producing the gene modified mice and supply to not only for the researcher in our university, also that other institute like uh, Hokkaido University or Okinawa University or other universities. And not only the domestic, but domestic that we also producing the mouse and supply to the foreign countries like uh, UK or US or Germany or France or Korea. Unfortunately, we have never supplied mice to the Indonesia. And uh, hopefully that you will order me to making that knockout mice. And at now, we proudly this service because of that uh, we are contributing that many research, including some of the nature people or cell stem cell papers. And uh, so far that we contribute to around 50 papers and uh, our mice are using in these papers. And this is a topic or menu of today's my uh, presentation. Firstly, I'd like to explain that why we using the mice. And secondly, that we, I will focusing on the gene modified mice, I call the GMM. And I briefly explain about the transgenic mice or knockout mice. And finally, I will explain about the genome editing for making that gene modified mice. So first topic is that why mice, why mouse? So this is a slide that we, I already showed you. And uh, we love mice. The researcher love mice. So you can find that we have found 5,000 cages in the, this wing and 10,000 cages in this wing. So totally that we have 15,000 cages in our laboratory animal centers. And actually five to eight mice can be in that one cage. So maximally we, we can manage more than 35,000 mice. And including me or Azumi-san that in the University of Tsukuba, the human, just only the 21,000 humans in our university, but mice is more than 30,000. So actually in our university, mice population is bigger than the human population. So why? Based on that, that we, not only for the University of Tsukuba, and also that other inside shoe or a pharmacology company, that I think that the first choice of that animal experiment is mice. So one of the reasons to that researcher choose that mice is that so Felix that they get many, many offspring. So at one bus, you can get five to 15 offspring. So from one mother that you got around 10 mice in each birth. And also that the cycle of generation is very, very fast. So preg pregnancy duration is that 90.5 days, around 20 days. After fertilization, you got the babies and they just need eight weeks for sexual maturation. So this is around three weeks and this is eight weeks. So around 11 weeks need for one generation. Therefore that if you want that you can circling that more than four generations per year. And 
it's very easy mathematical question that if these mice birth at 10 offspring, you will get the five to five of male and female, and you made it this five to five. And second generation, you got uh, 25 to 25 mice or something. So like that. So therefore, only in a year that you got more than 10,000 mice. So this is a reason that the researcher choose that mice. Of course, there are some Drosophia, fruit fry, or C. elegans. It's more easy to proliferate it, or E. coli, or yeast are more easy, but uh, actually, this model is a little far from the human as a genetic level. And also, as a genetic level, that monkeys or other species, some of other uh, species, we are more closely to humans. But uh, for that monkeys that you need to wait to three to five years to get uh, new babies and uh, they just get one or two. So it's really difficult to get so many babies. So it means that it's not good for the student research. So students just have two or five years and you just wait to get the uh, new babies for the two years that you have no chance to get the PhD or master's grade. So therefore, that this is one reason that young researchers also love to use the mice. And the second reason is I already to a little bit told you about that mice. It's of course they are mammalian. So this slide, uh, this figure is from this nature's paper, and it's showing about the genetic distance between that mouse and humans. Well, so mouse actually that they say that mus musculus and the homo human is a, a homo. And you can find that homo is here and the macaque, the monkey. Of course, the monkey is very closely to the human at the genetic distance level, but mouse is not so far from the humans. So Japanese, I, I don't know about Indonesia, but the Japanese love to uh, care that live with, with uh, dogs or cats as a pet, but uh, it's a very uh, popular sp animal species. But uh, in terms of genetic level, genomic sequence level, the mice is more than closer to the human than these very familiar species. So therefore that uh, if you got some experimental data from the mice, maybe this data can be apply to the human. In some cases, it's, we cannot, but uh, when you use these animals, maybe the mouse is more suitable to apply the result, the research result, in research result to the human cares. And the macaque monkey is of course more great animal model for the research, but uh, I already told you that it's not so easy to prepare the, the handling environment or uh, preparing that enough number for that experiment. So the mouse is a very good balance for the genetic distance and the usefulness. And the third reason is today's topic, the gene modifier technology is developed. So now uh, we are going to that main topic of this class. So in this course that I'd like to introduce uh, two models of the genetically modified mice. One is a transgenic model and the other is a knockout model. The transgenic model in this course that is a transgenic model is useful for for that gain of function model. And knockout mouse model is good for that loss of function model, used use as a loss of function models. So for the transgenic mouse model, if you want to know that some of endogenous protein that express naturally in the wild type mice, that if you want to know that if this protein amount is increased in the mice, what happened? So if you found some the candidate of the uh, cancer-derived genes, and uh, you can making that 
producing that many of this, the candidate of cancer proteins and checking about that occurrence of the tumor or something. So this is a good for, this is a gain of function model. Or you can also express producing that other types of protein. I mean that not only the mouse natural protein that you can express, you can make the pro human protein in the mice. So if you found uh, some that uh, mutant to human protein, and it may cause a disease or something that you can express this abnormal human protein to the mice and taking a phenotype. Or uh, you can also express some of the virus or microbiological protein that may cause of that disease. And you can check some of the uh, effect for the phenotype of the mice. So therefore, if you want to know that human proteins or uh, other species protein, I think that the transgenic, the gain of function model is very useful. Or uh, if you want to know that about that uh, the function at the high amount of your interested proteins that also this transgenic model is very good, very useful model. Contrast, in contrast to this transgenic model, that knockout model is a loss of function model. It means it's very simple structure. So if you delete this natural expressing that mass protein, what happened? So you can uh, directly know the function of this protein or gene function that's coding these proteins. And uh, the gain function model is an adding model plus model. And loss of function model is a subtract model, like a, a minus model. So today I will explain about how to making the transgenic model and knockout model. And uh, briefly explain about the history that how it's developed. So this is a, a very simple illustration about the transgenic mouse model. This Jackson Laboratory uh, web, web, sorry, eh, to, this website showing about uh, the mouse have around uh, 22, 23,000 proteins, genes, mice have. They coding that in their chromosome, around 20,000 genes are coded in the mice. It's uh, similar to the human. So in the transgenic model, you can add new one genes. So I mean that in your transgenic model, this mouse have 2,000, uh, sorry, 22,954 genes. Actually the natural mice just have 53 genes, but in your mice, they have the one gene. So you can add one trans genes. It's okay that you put the same gene as uh, to the mice, must already have, or you can put some human gene or some virus genes. And the point, one point, my important point of transgenic mod model is that you can put that this exogenous gene into any locus, any site of the chromosome. Actually, you cannot choose that you can put your desired gene, what you want to add, to the mouse chromosome, but you cannot choose that where this trans gene are located. In some case, this human trans gene are integrated to chromosome one. In some case, it's integrated to chromosome three. In some case, it's located in integrated to chromosome X or something. And in many cases, we cannot know where this trans gene are located in this chromosome. So you can put, but you don't know where is it. So this is a transgenic mouse model. And uh, this is a simply illustrated about the how to make the transgenic mouse model. It's very simple that you got the fertilized embryo from some mice, and you can see that this is a pronucleus, the nucleus of the embryo, and it's a very thin needle, and this is a transgene, the DNA solution is introduce this pronucleus and this embryo grown up to the mice. So this is a transgenic mouse model. It's so easy. Just you can introduce that the DNA into the pronucleus 
and you got the transgenic mice. It's very simple method. And uh, I just briefly explained about the structure of the conventional transgene. They have the three component and the polyase is a little bit difficult. So, and it's not so important. So I will pass it. And today I just explained about this two part. One is a promoter and enhancer. It's controlling that where and when your interested protein are expressed. And some of you may already know about the promoter or enhancer that it's control that expression time and expression pattern. I mean that some of gene like a gene Y, if it's just expressed in the adult liver that they around the sequence, genomic sequence around this gene Y, define that this sequence is just function at the a liver and adult. So therefore that gene Y is just expressed in the adult livers. So we call this region is a transcriptional regulatory region. So therefore this sequence of controls when and where this gene expressed. And uh, I skipped some of the promoter or enhancer is already known. Promoter sequence, DNA sequence is already reported. One of the most famous promoter is a CAG promoter, CMV enhancer, and chicken beta action promoter. This is a, one of the most strongest ubiquitous promoter. It means that uh, this promoter are active the, always and all tissues. So if you want to express your interested protein all the time and all the cells that you can use this ubiqu strong ubiquitous promoters. Also the other ubiquitous promoters are known like a PGK promoter or EF alpha promoter. If you want to express your target protein, your interested protein only in the nerve system, you can use that nesting promoter sequence or D6 promoter sequence or GFAP sequence. Like that, that if you want to express your gene at the heart, you can use MHC promoter. And if you want on the liver, maybe uh, some of the researchers in the pharmacology very interested in the liver that uh, they can use, you can use that albumin promoter or AAP promoter to express your target genes. Or well, pancreas at PDX1 promoter or just only the beta cell that you can use insulin one promoter or something. And the second part is, uh, of course, this is the most important part about the structural genes that the gene coding your target interested the proteins. It's just an example that EGFP is a green fluorescent protein. It's just a reporter. And I already say that human cancer gene or virus gene also can use as a structural gene that when you put the virus gene into here, so you can check about how this virus gene is related to human disease. And uh, we just combined to this promoter and the structural genes. In this case, I combined that CAG, this is a ubiquitous promoter that expressing highly, strongly expressed in the every time and every tissues. So therefore that you can find the green fluorescent EGFP protein signal in the, all the tissue and actually the, all the time. Here, I use a D6 promoter. It's just function as a cortex, the nerve, central nerve system. So in that case, this D6 promoter is active only in the cortex, but not in other part, somatic part, therefore that if we connect the D6 promoter to EGFP, you can find the EGFP signal, green fluorescent signal only in the brain, but not in other tissues. Actually, this EGFP sequence, this EGFP sequence is completely the same, but uh, if you change the promoter, the CAG to D6, the expression pattern is changed like that. And the FLK1 is a basic uh, vessel to punk function the promoter, so you can find the uh, only in the rest in the EGFP signal. And uh, ah, this is uh, one of the typical example for the transgenic mouse model for the uh, COVID-19 research. 
this is a, a actually that one of the most useful model for the COVID-19 research that uh, this is also transgenic mice. Actually, they are the human is to sequence that cor uh, coronavirus can bind to this human is to receptor sequence and they are invert to that uh, human cell, uh, sorry, that the, the cell in, inside of the cells. And uh, actually that uh, this coronavirus do not bind to the mouse as to receptor. So if you want to infect the COVID-19 to the mice for the experimental model, you should add that human S. And this in this model, this human S2 receptor is expressed in the airway epithelial cell. And it's controlling by that K18 promoter. It's just active on these epithelial cells. So this is the history of the transgenic mouse development. And the uh, first level about transgenic mouse production is by, by the Gordon at the 1980, that they succeed to get to the transgenic mice. So in this paper, they demonstrated that foreign gene, like a transgene, can be introduced into the chromosome by this DNA microinjections. But in that case, that transgene is not expressed. And the second report on the cell by that blister he uh, making that functional protein in the mice. And it's of course introduced in the mouse chromosome. And this is uh, the report at the nature by the parameter that in this level that parameter succeed to the functional and affect to the mouse phenotype transgene, is uh, he succeeded to introduce this transgene that affect to that mouse phenotype. So in this parameter's level that they introduce that the growth hormone, that the growth hormone genes, and that they use a promoter is a metal responsive element. So if you add some metal by uh, including the water and uh, you administer right, a mouse feed this metal, MTF1, this is a mouse uh, endogenous transfusion factor bind to this metal and uh, bind to that this promoter sequence and the growth hormone is expressed. Therefore that if you put the, if you administer this ZNSF4 to the mice, that this transgenic rat growth hormone is expressed and mouse getting bigger. This is a mouse, very big mouse can be found, uh, obtained by this method. So next I will explain about the injection or how to make the transgenic mouse. But uh, it's very easy just, uh, you just introduce a DNA solution into the mouse embryos like that. So this is a nucleus of the mouse embryos and injects. You can find uh, some enlargement of the nuclear and the DNA solution of the field in this micro injection, uh, very thin needle and enlarged. So by manually that you will put, introduce the DNA solution into the nucleus in the embryos. That's all you got transgenic mice by these technologies. And uh, this is our uh, micro injection room. This is uh, uh, incubators to culture that embryos. And this is a stereo microscopy to uh, manipulating the embryos. And in this very small room, but we have the two micro injectors. Right, this is a one. And this is a stereo microscopy and the cameras. This is a two, like that. It's not a clean room, but uh, 
we can make the many transgenic mice from this room. So I just have only 25 minutes. Okay, I will skip it. We, I have one hour today and one hour for the discussion. Uh, I think we, uh, for our discussion about 15 to 30 minutes. Okay. So you can talk more. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Ja, I will try to talk about this little bit complex mouse embryo development. So this is the oocyte. How to getting that oocyte uh, showing that up. This is Orgonia is a source of the oocyte. And Orgonia differentiation into the oocyte. And the Orgonia just found in the embryonic stage in the ovary of the mouse, of course, the female mice. And the Orgonia can be proliferated by that uh, uh, only in the baby's ovary. And uh, this is a primary oocyte. You can find that two copies of the chromosome. Uh, this is a paternal chromosome on the black, and this is a maternal chromosome. You can see by the white. And you can find that two pairs of that, one pair of the clo uh, paternal chromosome and uh, maternal chromosome. And this meiosis, the crossover uh, occurs and like uh, these crossovers occurs and in the chromosome is uh, recombinated. And the oocyte is stocked, storaged, stored in the ovary. In the human, that the, in the female human, at the birth, the oocyte is in this state. And this oocyte are sleeping at this ovary until the putative, like uh, 15 years or something. And the sum of oocyte can be slipped around 50 years or something at the adult ovaries, but they do not proliferate. It. You can store it at the embryo phase, and it's already after this crossover, they cannot proliferate it, and it's just stored in the ovaries. And uh, by more developed to the from the primary oocyte to the secondary oocyte, this too is out from the oocyte and it's become to the first polar body. It's like a trash box that they do not use this chromosome. Therefore, they uh, remove these chromosomes and the sperm are embedded to the oocyte and fertilized. In that case, okay, after that, the, this chromosome is also removed from the oocyte. This is the secondary polar bodies. And this is, is the um, embryos. And this chromosome is from sperm, like a father, the paternal chromosome. And this one is actually this chromosome. So these two poor for our body is not uh, involved to the uh, to contribute to the embryos. They do not differentiate in embryos. It's like a trash box. If you remove these for our bodies from this embryo, that of course it's not problem. There is no problem that you can remove it. And from this also oh, oh, sorry that early embryo we call this a zygote uh, can develop to the mice. And for the transgenic mass technology that we will put DNA into the male pronucleus. Back to this slide, actually you can find the two nucleus. Sorry, this is a one and two or sure. one and two. And we will put the bigger one is that male pronuclear. It's from the paternal. There is in the paternal chromosome. You can find two clo pronucleus. And we usually put introduce a DNA into the paternal pronucleus. It's more larger than the maternal, so therefore technically easy to introduce papers. 
And yeah. after that, this zygote, this is the first stage of the uh, embryo, uh, developed. And the mice. This is a human embryo. Uh, sorry, this is a mouse uh, reproductive tissues. Sorry, my internet is not so good now. Can you? Yeah, now uh, we can hear you well, but okay. previously a little bit something ah. uh, happened. Yes. Okay, thank you. Well, it's very easy slide, and you can neglect it if you want. So, this is a, this slide, slide showing about the reproductive tissue in the mice. And you can find that this is the oocyte. And the fertilization occurs at the, these tissues. This is an oviduct. This is an ovary. And here is a uterus. And the fertilization occurs at the, on the e, oviduct. And from here, fertilize the pronuclear stage embryo to molar stage or early blastocyst are developed. This developmental phase are in this oviduct. This is a, a zygote stage, pronuclear stage to the molar stage or early blast stage in the oviduct. And they move to that uterus and hatching and implanting. It's also the same that they uh, phase is, uh, sorry, uh, the day is different, but uh, almost same on the mouse and humans. The all, also in the human, that fertilization occurred in the oviduct and developed to that early blastocyst at the oviduct and implant, uh, to, you can find that blastocyst in the uterus and implant it. And until this oocyte or sperm or uh, embryos from the zygotic uh, pronuclear stage to the blood cyst. So you can culture in vitro. And uh, you can transfer to the oviduct. To, uh, after you, like that, after you cultivate it in vitro, that you can back to the mouse oviduct and you got uh, new mice, newborn mice. So we cutting the back of mice and pick the oviduct and ovary up and come out them. And this is the ovary and this is the oviduct. We cut it by scissors. And this is a glass capillary in embryo in here. And we can pack the in vitro cultivated embryo into the other types of mice and the tissue are back to their bodies. After 20 days, that we will get the babies from this in vitro cultivated embryos. So this is a scheme about how to make the transgenic mice that you will get to the embryos, the pro-nuclear stage embryo, and put to uh, transgenic mice and you're implanted to the adaptive mothers and you got the transgenic mice. So here is a transgenic mouse topic and next is a knockout mice. So back to the last slide. I already showed this slide that in the transgenic mouse model that you can add high amount of endogenous protein or the other types of the other kind of protein in the knockout model that you can delete the endogenous proteins. And it's so easy for you, maybe too basic for you. So in the tragic mass model, 
I already told you that transgene can add anywhere or we cannot choose. In some cases, TG is integrated to the chromosome one, in some cases, in chromosome 15 or something. But uh, loss of function model, knockout mouse model, because your target gene locus is defined, it, decided. So if you want to knock out the gene A, gene A is localized on the, this chromosome. And if you want to knock out gene Z, gene Z in the here, like that. So in that case that we should making the mutation at the, this targeted part. For the transgenic mice, you can add anywhere. It's very rough. But in the knocked out mouse oh, study you. that you must making the mutation at your only in your targeted site. Therefore, to making this mutation is very, very difficult. And uh, transgenic mouse model is very easy, very simple that you just put the transgene into the pronucleus and getting the transgene. So because it's a very rough that uh, it's okay that transgene is located in anywhere, but a knockout model is not. So this is a reason that why we need uh, many technology to make the knockout mice. But a knockout mice is so useful for that genetic research. They made possible for that reverse genetics. The four genetics is like a human genetics that we will find some gene uh, genetic uh, disease people and to find that these causative genes. But the reverse genetics, that firstly, you are focusing on the genes that you will uh, target some of the candidate genes that may function in vivo. And uh, you look out the gene and checking the phenotype. In the phylogenetics, you found some of the abnormal phenotype mice, or abnormal phenotypic humans, and found by using some NGS sequence data or something and to find a causative gene. But the reverse genetic, firstly, you will destroy the gene and checking the phenotype of this mice. And this method is very simple, but uh, uh, strong. You can get the completely uh, 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 to, you can get a very strong evidence for the gene function. In that model, that is a very typical model that if you knock out OTX2 genes, they are located on here and they do not have face. It means that OTX2 is definitely uh, necessary for making the head. And this is a leptin knocked out model that leptin is located on this chromosome. And in that case, this mice never stopped eating. And uh, you can find this fatty mice. So it, this data clearly show that leptin is very important for that uh, this metabolite. Uh, this slide show this slide showing about how to making that knockout mice model. And actually, this is a two method to make the knockout mice. One is a gene targeting, and second is a genome editing. So for that, this gene, uh, so today I will explain the both the gene targeting and genome editing. And But actually that at now, currently that we just using the genome editing, but not in gene targeting. This is like a classical technology. So maybe that for this, you, like your young student just, need to learn about this genome editing. But uh, also this is a very great technology, so I'd like to introduce today. And these three months, men develop this gene targeting technology to make the knockout mice. Here, these three men. And these two women uh, develop the genome editing technologies. So firstly, I, I explained about the gene targeting and start to uh, I will start to talk about embryo stem cells, ES cells. So as already shown that mouse or also human embryo is developed from the oocyte and after fertilization that you will get a single stage embryo then two cell and four cell or eight cell and molecular cell and blood cyst. And uh, at the the phase of that four cell to eight cell 
over this molar stage, that first fate decision uh, occurs. It means that they change the fate. So in that case, this gray color cell can be developed any types of the cell lineage. But af after this uh, cell cleavage, that it's developed to that two uh, different lineage, cell lineage. One is a TE, trophectodam endodam, here, trophectodam endodam. It's become to the placenta, these green ones. And the other one is ICM. And uh, this ICM, yellow color cells, never become to the green one. Also, this green cell never back to the this yellow one or this gray cells. And at the early embryo are constructed by this ICM cells and this trophectodam, trophect endodam. And late stage brassis, the ICM is differentiated that another uh, two cell lineage. One is the epibrast, blue one, epibrast here. And the red one is a primitive endodam. So at the late brassic phase, there are three cell lineages. One is a trophectodam, and one is a primitive endodam, and one is a epibrast. And actually the babies, our bodies, is developed from only this blue color epibrast. And this yellow colored cells, a primitive endodam, majorly developed to the yolk sac. And this green one, trophectodam, it just can become to placenta. It means that this green cell cannot making that eyes or hairs or skins or something. The eyes or skins or some somatic cells in our body, all of this, our body's somatic cell is developed from epibrast. And epibrast developed to the endoderm and mesoderm and nectoderm, and they also differentiate to the lung or heart or some neural tissues like that. And what is the embryo stem cell, ESL, is the in vitro cultivated cell of this epibrast. Therefore, this embryo stem cell have the potential to becoming these kind of our body's, body's somatic cells. But this embryo stem cell cannot back to the, develop to the, differentiate to the Trophectodam or primitive endodam. Actually, him, the Evans, developed to, firstly developed to this embryo stem cell from the mouse blastocyst. And using this embryo stem cell that we do the gene targeting by using some artificial DNA vectors. So this is a chromosome in the mouse embryos. And your target gene is located here. And the green color means that uh, they have no meaning that they do not coding the gene. But uh, this green color sequence is completely same in the artificial DNAs that you make. Also, this blue color is same to these blue colors are same. So this is artificial DNA. You should make it for the gene targeting. So this is a chromosomal sequence that mouse originally have. And after you put this artificial DNA into the ES cells, the homologous -like recombination occurs like that. This chromosome DNA is recombinated by this by using this same sequence, and they go back to chromosome by using that this uh, blue color sequence. Like that, homologous -like recombination occurs, and you can find that this yellow color, your target gene sequence. Uh, change it to this purple color that sequence. And actually this yellow color sequence is a negative selection gene. After next slide, I will explain that what is a, this yellow color sequence. And also I will explain this purple color sequence. But anyway, that in this slide, that please remember that your target gene coding, this red color sequence is changed to the purple color sequence. And your target gene sequence are removed from the chromosome. And the uh, yellow color is a DTA. 
it's a suicide gene that if cell have this yellow color genes, cell will be died. This is a suicide gene, toxic genes. And this is a neomycin resistant gene that in our body that if we cultivate it ESL and put the high amount of the neomycin, that our cells are died, ESL are died. But if ESL have this neomycin resistant gene, the protein can be uh, uh, antagonized, uh, sorry, that inhibit the neomycin function and uh, natural protein synthesis are occurs. Therefore, that even in the uh, put into the neomycin into the medium of ESL, if ESL have this neomycin gene, that can be survived. So this is the your target gene that you should make it and put to the MX stem cells. In, the, in many cases, this artificial your target gene is not integrated the cells. You put it, but it's your target, your plasmid is removed from the cells, not integrated. In that case, this is a natural state, mouse natural state that you are target gene here. And of course, this suicidal gene and neomycin resistant gene is not in your, in this natural state yes, cells. And in some case, it's randomly integrated. This is your target locus, but like a transgenic mice that your target gene is integrated to the other part of the chromosome, other chromosomal region. In that case, the yellow color, this suicide gene is integrated into the mouse chromosome. And uh, this situation, what we want, the most ideal case is a homologous recombination. In the homologous recombinated case that like this case, this yellow color gene the suicide gene is not integrated to the chromosome, but the purple color gene is integrated to the chromosome. Therefore, this ideal the homologous recombinated ES cells that they have purple gene, but they do not have the suicidal yellow genes. So this is a very easy cartoon that there are three situations. White cells is a natural state. Nothing happened. You put the transient, but that, you put the target, you put the, your, uh, this DNA, your artificial DNA, but it's removed from the ES cells. Therefore, this is a natural state. There is no purple gene and there is no yellow genes. And yellow color gene, a yellow color cells is uh, randomly integrated like here. That it's like a trans gene that randomly integrated. They have both yellow gene and purple genes. And finally is that ideal case, a recombinated gene. They do not have yellow, but they have the purple genes. And of course, these yellow color cells are died by this suicide gene. <laughs> and after you put the neomycin, the neomycin into the ES cell medium, your Ideal case that homologous recombinated cells have neomycin resistant gene, but wild type cell, natural cell, do not have the resistant gene and they died. And finally, only the targeted recombinant cell are survived. And this gene targeting technology are developed by this Kapeki and Smithies. And these recombinated ES cells. Uh, next, we make develop to the chimeric mice. So, to making the ES cells, I already explained by this slide that ES cells are derived from these green color cells. So, this, uh, sorry, this blue color cells, these blue color cells can be the, any of our somatic cells, eyes or something but they do not develop to the placenta or yolk sac. Therefore, if you put this uh, blue color cells or ES cells into the mother's oviduct or uterus, that they cannot develop to the mouse because they cannot making the becoming the placenta or yolk sac. Therefore, to making the mice from the ES cells that we use the other uh, embryos, and we call this a host cells. 
This is other not、uh, wild type embryos. And this is the ES cells. And put to inject to the ES cells into the other embryos, like that. This is more easier to understand, I think. So you will establish the e m b r y o stem cell from the black mice. And、uh, of course, that e m b r y o stem cell is developed from this. Blue color cells, these blue color cells. And the、uh, cell cannot become to the placenta or yolk sac. Therefore, that this cell cannot be coming to the mouse alone. Therefore, that we put these cells to these white mouse embryos. Of course, that this white mouse embryo h a v e these three、uh, cell lineages. One is a green one. That can become to the placenta, and one is a red one, can be that、uh, a yolk sac, primitive e n d o d e r m And of course, this white, blue,、uh, blue line that white cells can be coming that white somatic cells. And we put the blue,、uh, sorry, that black,、uh, blue colored lined cells, and it's like a chimeric. Composition. So you can find that white, blue colored cells and black become. Because, because of this blue color cells becoming to that all of somatic cell in our body or mouse body, that this white region s is from this white cells. And this black, blue, black color region is from this. Black color that ES cells, like that. And、uh, of course, that yolk sac is only the derived from the white mice, and placenta is only from that white, this、uh, green line cells. But、uh, somatic cell is like a competition. So you can find that white color cells from this white and blue color,、uh, sorry, black color cells from this black cells. So, I just want to briefly explain the term about the mosaic or chim chimera or a hybrid. When we say that mosaic is some, have some the mutation with the, uh, uh, some of the p a r t of the cells and developed. In that case, that some of the cell from this mutant cell derived from this mutant cell that have some of these mutations. But chimeric mice, like、uh, embryo embryo chimeric or embryo ES cell chimeric, that the source of the somatic cell is different. So, t h e s e green color cells from t h e s e green embryos, and this yellow,、uh, red color cell is from t h e s e red color embryos or ES cells. But the mosaic case, that all of somatic cell derived from the one、uh, embryo, s and during that development, Meant the sum of the cell have the mutation and develop. So, genotype is different between this mutated cell and this variety of cell, but the source is the same. The chimeric mice, the source is different. And hybrid is、uh, using that、uh, different species like a lion and tiger, and we got a leopard or something. So, back to the main story the ES cell becoming the knockout mice, like a chimeric mice, and sperms. In this chimeric mice, fertilize to the oocyte, and you will get a heterozygous mutant. And after you make intercross this heterozygous intercrosses, you got a knockout mice. So, therefore, there are very long distance, long way to making the knockout mice. Firstly, you should prepare the embryo stem cell, and you should do the gene targeting in the ES cells, and you should make in the chimeric mice. And you got N1 generation. And after intercross of this N1 generation, you got a knockout mice. Therefore, that most fastest case, you need two years to making the knockout mice. And this making the gene targeting vector or gene targeting or chimeric mice production is not so easy. So, therefore, that to making the knockout mice is very difficult and a big effort. But you, we got、uh, very clear data for. Knowing the gene function. So we should do, but、uh, it's too hard to do it. And genome editing are developed. 
So generating is very easy that you don't, we don't need to using that ESL that we just need to embryos. So in the gene targeting, we rely on that uh, homologous recombination. But the homologous recombination is very ineffective. So I mean that it's just have 0 0.014% or something. So very, very low case. Therefore that when we want to do the gene targeting with embryo, we should prepare 1 million embryos and we should inject it to the gene targeting vector here. And we should uh, handling that a thousand, a hundred. Hundred thousand mice that if you want to do targeting in using with uh, embryos, so it means that it is impossible. Therefore, that we using that embryo stem cell, that embryo stem cell can, it is possible to prepare that a million of ESL because it can be self proliferating in the medium. So therefore that it's very easy to preparing the a number of ESLs, but the preparing that this a number of embryos or mice is very difficult. So this is the reason why we should using that embryo stem cell in the gene targeting method. However, the gene genome editing changing that everything about the knockout mass production. So if we just putting some uh, artificial nucleus, uh, artificial nucleus that can making the mutation in the embryo, you got around you got a knockout mass around one hundred percent. So in the gene targeting on the ESL, it's a very very low frequency, but genome editing have very effective. So genome editing is uh, defined it by the uh, types of gene engineering using that artificial nucleus by using the zinc finger nucleus or teren or CRISPRs. So today, maybe I will talk too much. So I just briefly explain about the CRISPR-Cas9. So CRISPR-Cas9 has a two component that guide RNA that can recruit the Cas9 protein and uh, anneal to that target genomic DNA. And the Cas9 protein has two scissors and uh, they can making the double strand break in genomic regions. So CRISPR-Cas9 is very easy and fast that the Cas9 protein can be used in all the projects. So you just need to prepare that only the guide RNA. So if we want to target this purple color region, that you should put this purple color sequence on only in this region. If you want to make the mutation at this site, so you can change only this purple sequence to the green sequence that's uh, similar to same as this uh, gene locus. And if you want to this blue color the locus, you just want to change this green sequence to the blue. So. But the other part of the guide RNA part of a Cas9 protein is the same. So, and this guide RNA is very cheap. It's very easy and easy to making this RNA sequence or RNA fragment. Therefore that you can knock it out 10 or 20 genes per week or something. And uh, micro injection, I say that it's simple, but uh, actually a little bit technically difficult. And uh, most, the hard, hard part is the uh, most difficult point is to making that environment. I mean that to prepare the equipment is very difficult. So if you want to do micro injection, you need uh, several tens of millions of yen. I mean the 100,000 US dollar, you need to prepare the, this equipment. However, that uh, Kaneko-sensei in the Iwata University developing the very unique genome editing system. So they succeeded to that electroporation of the Cas9. So this is an electroporator and uh, you can put to the CRISPR-Cas9 solution here and embryo together with the embryos. And if we put one button in this electroporator, it, uh, so you, 
easily to introduce the、uh, CRISPR Cas9 complex into the, these embryos by the pulsing, electrochemical pulse. So, in that case, you just need only the three million yens and、uh, you got 100 or something of the、uh, knockout mass strains. And the more easiest way、uh, developed by the Otsuka Sensei in the Toka University in Japan is a gonad. So, in that case, that you need to do the in vitro culture of the embryos. So, I, as I already showing that embryo, the zygote is in the oviduct with embryos. And the Otsuka Sensei succeeded to the CRISPR Cas9 solution into the oviduct. And electroporation at the oviduct. In that case, that you needed to put oocyte or embryo out to the in vitro, that all of the experiment can be done in the in vitro, including in the genome editing and electroporation. And you got a knocked out mice without any in vitro embryo manipulations. So, This is an event following the genomic DNA cleavage that I already explained about the CRISPR Cas9 have the two scissors that they can make the double stand break like that. So they cut this strand and this strand. Therefore, it's making the double stand like, like that. CGTACT into here and GATCGG, GATCG like that. So this is a cut it and separate it. CRISPR Cas9 can make this double stand break. But、uh, after that, actually, we have the repair system, endogenous repair system. Mouse or human have this natural repair system. Therefore, after this double stand break, it's repaired without errors. And, but、uh, after this, back to this natural wild type, wild type genomic sequence, CRISPR Cas9 back to this site and cutting again. And therefore, the, this is like a balance that CRISPR Cas9 cut here, and we are repair by our system, and CRISPR Cas9 cut, repair, cut, repair, cut, repair, like that. And finally, if we lose, if our repairing system l o s e I mean that we repair the genomic DNA sequence with errors. In that case, this GA sequence. Uh, deleted. This two base pair DNA sequence is deleted. You can find that GTACT, GTACT, and GATC. But、uh, in this GA are removed. Therefore, GACT, GTACT is directly bind to a、uh, to like, like、uh, to the, this TCGG. TCGG. So, in that case,、uh, this two base pairs DNA sequence are removed from the chromosome. In that case, the target sequence of the guide RNA, the CRISPR Cas9 target sequence, is disappeared. Therefore, it's、uh, fixed, immobilized. So, this is、uh, an event that after the CRISPR Cas9 cutting the genomic DNA sequence. And we call these mutations is indel mutations. Now, this is the original sequence that after the、uh, CRISPR Cas9 cutting this sequence. Actually, we cannot control the, this mutation pattern, and we can set in that cutting site of the chromosomal DNA by the CRISPR Cas9. But after this, some of that two base pair deletion or three base pair insertion, or something that we cannot control. And we call this small mutation by i n d e l mutation. One is an insertion. In some cases, this is a four base pair insertion. GTGAA. This is the original sequence, but the CATT is jumped in and between this G and T, or this G are deleted. In some cases, one base pair deleted. In some cases, 10 base pair inserted. In some cases,、uh, 100 base pair deleted or something. So we can set t i n g the cleavage site, but we cannot control that how types of i n d e l mutation occur. This is some of the weak point of the genome editing. And after this i n d e l mutation, that frame shift occurs and the protein synthesis is stopped. 
And uh, not only that indirect mutation, also that the regional deletion can be made by CRISPR-Cas9, and it's more than easier than the indirect mutation. I, I mean that easier to detect it. So if we cutting the two side, this side and this side, so this is your target gene, the gene B, and you put the two types of chromosome, uh, two types of CRISPRs, one coding that green side, and other one coding that this blue side. And this is a green side cutting by this CRISPR-Cas9, and this blue side are uh, cutting by this CRISPR-Cas9. In that case, that uh, you succeed to cutting the two side, and this region are deleted, removed from the chromosome, and this cutting and this cutting edge are connected each other. In that case, gene B are totally, four gene B region are deleted from the chromosome. In that case, it's more easier to detect it. So in the mutation, a very small mutation, a little bit difficult to detect the mutant sequence, but this is a regional deletion so that you can do the PC out to detect a gene B and easy to find a who is a knockout mice. So this is the impact of gene editing in our lab. Ah, this is me, more than younger, the second slide of this introduction or now, that this is a, actually in my uh, doctoral research, I'm making only one knockout mice from five years between the master two years and the doctor three years. We, I just needed to making the one knockout mass production. But uh, my student, uh, YO, she making that these kind of knockout mass within two years by CRISPR-Cas9. So in my student period, there is no CRISPR-Cas9 system. Therefore, I just needed to making that only one knockout mass so I can play many times. But uh, CRISPR-Cas9 change the knockout mass study. So student can making the 10 knockout or 20 knockout or 30 knockout mass. It's very easy to make it. The analysis is very difficult, but uh, they can make. So in that case, they making the 12 knockout strain within only the two years. She just in the master course and she found some knockout mass have no spam like that. And he making more is a Morimoto-san in the PhD student in our lab, making 20 or something the knockout mass within two years. And now she is a doc, he's a doctor course, and every day she he making that uh, many of knocked out mice. So I'm happy that the very easy student just I need uh, only one knockout mice, but uh, now you should make. 10 or 20 knockout to find a good result. And this is the impact of genome editing. So what I want to say in, uh, this is the last slide in my present, uh, sorry, in my topic, in this topic, that knockout is not difficult so far. I say that knockout is difficult when we use the ESL for the gene targeting. The T transgenic mass is very easy, but now is uh, maybe the knockout mass is more easier than transgenic. So please try to make the knockout or making the knockout as mouse with us. So thank you very much. This is a final slide of this, my presentation that acknowledgement in the, for our Labo members and you next. And uh, ah, this slide also showing about the recruitment. So my lab belongs to yeah. the Faculty of Medicine or HBP. So if you shoot this QR code, you can directly jump to our lab homepage and it's linked to this uh, faculty of medicine doctoral course or a human biology doctoral course. Okay, and uh, sorry, this uh, sorry, truly final side that mini lecture by provided by that human biology course that I just talking only 20 minutes about this uh, content. So if you are interested, also please checking the YouTube from this link, or uh, you can type that HBP mini lecture, Mizuno or something that you can find that's almost same lecture, but only 20 minutes. So thank you very much for listening. That's all. Okay, thank you very much indeed, Dr. Seya Mizuno for the presentation. Uh, yeah.
we already hear the very impressive talk from Dr. Saya Mizuno. So, uh, yeah, as mentioned before from, uh, from Dr. Saya Mizuno, if you are interested in uh, access, uh, in, what can I say, in accessing the mini lecture, so you can uh, scan the QR code. So, okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's start the discussion session. So everyone is allowed to ask questions. So for the participants, please just use the raise hand features or also you can type your question in Zoom chat box. Okay. Uh, is there any questions from participants? Okay, there is some question from M. Iqbal. So for the M. Iqbal, you can turn on your microphone. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for your presentation, Mr. Seiya Mizuno. Uh, my name is uh, Muhammad Iqbal. I'm a currently student at graduate program of Faculty of Pharmacy, University of Indonesia. So my question here is, it's quite interesting about engineered animal model because it could help us study about pathophysiological model of some disease. But uh, here, uh, just transgenic or knockout gen animal, especially rat or mice, need a special treatment. Is this uh, animal model need a special treatment? Uh, are those uh, technique, like uh, the lesion of gain uh, can cause the mouse uh, also changing, uh, changing in behavior because we know this animal have deleted or inserted gain, okay? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Maybe uh, Mizuna Sensei can answer the question directly. Okay, sorry, I, I'm sorry. I cannot get to your point that you want to know some techniques or you are interested in some changing the behavior of the mice, sorry. Uh, no, uh, I mean, uh, this uh, engineered animal model uh is uh this animal have uh need a special treatment uh need a special treatment than the white model than the white model special document special treatment. treatment yes so for using this genetically modified uh, animal so is there any special treatment compared to the wild type ah, treatment. animal model yes is it like that? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. You you mean that we should prepare some that special environment or special feed or special yes. water or something? Yes. Uh, ah, yeah. Thank you. Is it possible to transfer across the sea? I mean, like that. Thank Thank you very much. I got the point. I'm sorry. It, actually, it's up to that. What do you want to do? So, or what which gene you are interested? So. If you are delete the very important gene for living, the mice, after that you delete the gene, mouse is very weak, so you need a special care. But in some case, you targeted delete the gene, it's not affect the phenotype so much. You don't need to prepare the, any special environment. Is it okay? Uh, for M. Iqbal, I think it's still uh, mute. Uh, so, uh, not uh, every single of uh, my stress clinic need a uh, special treatment. Is it right, Mr. Mizuno? Sorry, I cannot get the point about a special document. Special conditions. Uh, condition. Yes, condition. Yes. Yes. What does it mean of the condition in your context? So, mm, maybe we need uh, a special food or water. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, yeah, I, I, I say that. So, if that the mouse getting weak by deleting the gene, you need to prepare some special feed or something. But 
if it's not changed the phenotype by deleting your target gene, you don't need to prepare this kind of special treatment. Is it okay for you? Or are I misunderstanding something? Okay, I get the point. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And next to the next question from Doni Lukmanto. So we can see from the uh, through the chat box here. Dear Mizuno Sensei, greeting. Thank you for the wonderful insight and lecture. I have two basic questions. First, Sensei mentioned that integration side of the trans gene is random for the TG knock in mouse. Is it possible to selectively target the integration site for the generation of TG knock in mouse? Like selectively target transgene on locus such as ROSA26? Is it different with using promoter sequence to control the gene expression with? Ah, and, yeah, for a second, or maybe I need to continue the second questions. Ah, okay, so for the second question is, why does the efficiency TG knock in mouse production is so low between five to 15%? Thank you in advance for your discussion. Hi, Doni. Are you in Japan now? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm in. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very yes, much for attendance. Yeah, you are, you are, this question is so great and critical. And actually, I have no time today that I will not explain about the knockdown. So when we using the knockdown technology that we can integrate it to the target locus, as you mentioned, that ROSA 26 or something. And uh, for the knockdown that we can make in the knockdown array by using the same technology about gene targeting in embryonic stem cells, or of course we can do by genome editing with some uh, donor DNA. Yeah, this is a great point. I'm sorry that we I just have 1.5 hours, so I skip this very important knocking technology. That thank you for your follows. And uh, the low efficiency of the transgenic mice actually, 15 percent is a very high. So we just put in the DNA into the nucleus, and uh, this DNA integrated the chromosome or not is a, just a random event. If we actually that we have some technology that making that more 50 or 60 percent uh, production efficiency, but that when we using the conventional method, we just put the DNA fragment in the nucleus, and this is a, a, a to, at random to enter to the chromosome. This is the reason that we cannot control uh, the efficiency of that transgene productions. Thank you, Sensei. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, so I have a follow-up question. That so I, I got easily confused with the locus, like the WASA 26 is a locus, right? Or is it a promoter? Is it different with the promoter, like using the nesting promoter of D6 promoter or CG promoter? Yeah, that is yeah. Different. Uh, not, not difficult, but the D6, is a promoter for Dutch one. And Dutch one have endogenous gene also have the, uh, their functions. So if you put the, this exogenous DNA into these kind of functional endogenous gene region, mm -hmm. this endogenous gene are knocked out. But you oh. will know that ROSA do not have any functions. Yeah. Therefore, we, that self, right? yeah, yeah. Therefore we choose a ROSA DNA. I see. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Sensei. Have a good day. Okay, thank you. And another question from Jessica Trisina. So uh, Mizuno Sensei, thank you so much for the very interesting presentation. Would you please elaborate more regarding the micro injection techniques such as the material used for the micro needle particle size? Thank you in advance. Ah, thank you very much for your comment. And uh... Actually, these requests, the many requests are coming to our lab. And uh, this is a very good timing that we just published the, this kind of methodological paper last month. 
and uh, I de described very detail about these methodological condition. And uh, this is a uh, uh, open access paper, so you can read in your lab in any part. So I will chat now. And uh, actually, this is a video journal. And the day after tomorrow, we are taking the video. And we also up to the video about this method. And also, this video is free to see. So I'm happy that if you check these papers, it's OK. Can you see my chat? Yes, we can see. Hi. Yes, Mr. No Sensei, thank you very much. Thank you very much. OK, thank you very much uh, for the sharing. And also another question maybe from the participants. Uh, please uh, use the right hand feature if you have any question. Okay, so maybe uh, while waiting for others uh, to maybe type the questions or uh, asking question, I have a question actually. So you mentioned before about the knockout uh, techniques for the uh, loss of function. Uh, Another analysis or uh, investigation. So uh, I also hear about the knockdown, knockdown uh, genetically modified mice. So uh, could you please uh, describe more about this comparison between knockdown uh, and knockout? So how, uh, what factors that we should consider uh, whether we need to use this knockdown or knockout? Thank you very much. Yeah, this is also a very important question that someone use that knockdown technology by using that microRNA or siRNAs. So, but the RNA expression controlling is a little bit difficult. So I mean that this knockdown effect, it's difficult to controlling and uh, Also, that in that, it means that the knockdown efficiency is every time changing. Mm -hmm. It's changed between the tissues, or it's changing in the living life. Like a juvenile state is a highly knockdown, but uh, not, not in adult by that siRNA or microRNA expression patterns. However, that knockout is too strong in, in our body case. Many genes are uh, downregulated, not knockouted. Therefore, if you want e interested in that, the gene expression changing its effect to the phenotype, the knockdown is very useful. Mm -hmm. But if you want to know the gene function or to get the evidence about your targeted gene, I recommend to using the knockout. It's uh -huh. up to your aim of research. Uh, I see. Okay, so uh, another question is for knockout uh, so, uh, efficiency, like how we can confirm that this, uh, our knockout is success or no? Ah, that's also a very nice question. If you have antibody, you can do Western bloating or something. But in our case that we will do the PCR, PCR, to amplificate it, the target locus and checking the DNA sequence. And uh, it, we will check the efficiency. But in the cell, you, you know that in the mice is from that single cells. Therefore, that almost all cells have the same mutations. But in the cultivated cell, each cell have different mutations. Mm, it, in that case, it's very difficult to checking the all cell mutations. In that case, you will collecting the, all the cell, like bulk analysis, and ch checking that your target gene expression level by RTQ PCR, real time PCR, or you can check by that Western blotting using with antibodies. I see. Okay, so we need to also select the selective antibody to confirm the efficiency of the knockout. 
Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know that、uh, it's very difficult to get in the good antibody. So, <laughs> therefore, in our lab, that we do the RTQ PCR to check in that FECs. I, I got your point. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so、uh, maybe any other questions?、Uh, let's see. Yeah,、uh, maybe they are still thinking. <laughs> yeah, probably one more question from me is that okay, Sensei? Of course. Yes.、Uh, so I also wonder about the if、uh, is it possible to double how can I say double modify、uh, double modify our mice? For example,、uh, first we knock out the gene, and then later on we overexpress or knock in the gene to see the uh, uh, the difference or、uh, the phenotype effects. Or maybe interaction with other genes. Ah, yeah, this is also great questions. Yes, we can do. But in the mice, I recommend to that mating the two different strain, that knockout strain and some knocking mouse strain, and mate it. In that case, offspring has a knockout mutation and knocking mutation. So、oh, you do、okay. not you do not making that sequentially because that、uh, it can be separated in the next generation. Therefore, I recommend that you will make it to the mice. But if you think the cultivated cells, of course, that cultivated cell can not make it.、Yes. In that case, that you should do that sequentially knock out and knock in as you suggested. Ah,、uh, okay. Okay, I understand. That's a great question. Thank you so much、uh, for Mizuno Sensei for the great sharing. And maybe last question. Any more question? Okay,、uh, maybe it's、uh, enough. So、uh, many thanks once again to Dr. Seiya Mizuno for. Very excellent and insightful presentation and discussion. So, uh, okay. Uh, after this, I will return it to the MC. Thank you so much, Mizuno Sensei. Thank、again. you very much. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Noriza, and once again, thank you, Dr. Seiya Mizuno. To all participants,、um, for your information, we have shared the link for the attendance list as well as the evaluation survey in the chat box.、Um, as a form of appreciation, the committee would like to give Dr. Seiya Mizuno and Apotheker Noriza Ulul Asmi an E certificate. Give me a second. All right,、uh, this、uh, certificate. Certificates will be given virtually by Dr.、Uh, by Dr. Fadlina Chani Saputri.、Uh, we invite Dr. Fadlina to give the、e、certificate to Dr. Sayem Isuno and also to Apotheka Noriza Olasmi. Okay, thank you very much, Isuno Sensei, for your very interesting. Presentation, sharing your experience today.、Uh, we are very glad to have you in our summer course for this session. So hopefully we can、uh, meet each other for future. Maybe we can invite you again to Jakarta. So、uh, once again, thank you very much. All right, thank you. The next two. Apotekar Noriza Ulasmi. Okay, thank you, Noriza. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Fadina.、Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we are going to take a picture for documentation. Would you please turn on the video? And to one of the committee, please guide this photo session.
Okay, I will take a picture now. In three, two, one, smile. Okay, next. I will take a picture again. In three, two, one, smile. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, again, we would like to remind you all to fill in the attendance list that we already shared in the chat box. And for your reminder, the next lecture will be after a one hour momentary break. Lecture six will be given by Dr. Swarit Jasyal from Data Driven Chemistry, NICE Japan, that will start at 1 p.m. Jakarta time. And finally, we come to the end of this event. May all of us get the value and benefits from the lecture. Thank you very much for your kind attention and participation in this session of summer course. I am Arif Kurniawan signing off and we'll see you again in one hour. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.